I found this funky little glass vase at a thrift store and decided it was the perfect size for this project. It's about nine inches tall and I wouldn't recommend going any larger than that just because of the amount of clay that you're going to use and I can't guarantee that it will hold itself up. So as you can see, I started coating the vase in air dry clay. I ultimately wanted the final piece to not show any of the vase except for this um, round base at the bottom. The reason I'm using air dry clay instead of polymer clay is that I couldn't determine if the vase was oven safe. You want to check that first and then make sure that it will fit in your oven standing up if it is oven safe. Not all glass can be baked. So you wanna take that precaution because you don't wanna go through all of the work of sculpting this beautiful piece and then going to bake it and your glass inside breaks and it's just unusable. That would really, really suck. And just to be crystal clear, the only reason you would be baking this piece is if you decide to use polymer clay instead of air dry clay. After I covered the entire vase with a thin layer of clay, I started to build up the shape a bit more and hide the vase the rest of the way. To add the arteries and the veins coming off of the heart, I made cylinders of clay and then pressed them into place on the heart using my hands and some silicone tipped ceramic tools. I just kind of pressed and smushed them into place and used the silicone tip to smooth out the connection points. And I kept doing that just until it could stay on its own without falling off of the sculpture. To hollow out the ends, I used a ball stylus tool and I pinched the ends with my fingers to make it look a little bit more realistic.
To define some of the edges, I used a soft chisel shaped silicone tool and this kind of helps to sketch out where sections go and mark the boundaries of some of the kind of bulging muscle parts. And if you mess up, you can just kind of smooth it out and do it again. Here I'm using a ball stylus tool to smooth out the clay like an eraser. Clay is very forgiving while it's still soft. I completed my entire clay sculpting process in about two to three hours. So you'll wanna make sure that you work quickly to have all of the parts attached before the clay starts to dry. If you have dry clay and freshly added clay right next to each other, they won't be completely dry at the same time. And this can lead to cracking because they're not gonna be the same size at the same time because clay shrinks a little bit as it dries. And just know that if you're going to be doing this barehanded, your hands will look like the Crypt Keeper by the time you're done.
To add veins, I made some really skinny clay strips and just kind of pressed them into place. And you'll want to make sure that the ends are pointy so that way they resemble actual veins and not spaghetti. The clay will take about a day or two to dry depending on how thick you lay it on and how big your vase is underneath. Mine took about two days, just for reference. Once the clay was dry, I moved on to sanding. I used a 220 grit sandpaper and just lightly sanded all the places that had bumps or obvious seams where the clay pieces came together, any sort of little cracks or anything just to smooth it out and create a more polished look. This is the step that turns your sculpture into a really nice piece. So it's important to be careful not to miss any spots and not to over sand because if you do create divots, it's gonna be very obvious when you go to paint it. After I was satisfied with the sanding, I dusted off my sculpture and covered the base with masking tape. I also filled the top of the vase, the opening with tape, by sticking it all around the inside of the neck and then folding it in so that way the top edge is still visible, but that way nothing gets inside the actual vase. Then I sprayed the entire piece with a varnish to seal the clay and provide a better surface for my paint. I really like to do this step because I find that the paint goes on so much more evenly rather than just on the raw clay. And it adds a little extra protection against water and the elements. Once that first coat dried, I sprayed a second coat to make sure I didn't miss any little nooks or crannies or spots at all. With the second coat of varnish dried, I brought the piece inside to be painted. I left the tape on, obviously, because I don't want paint to get onto the base. I used white acrylic paint and started with all of the gaps and holes and creases to make sure I didn't miss any random spots. And then I moved on to painting the rest of the heart. And you may need a 
a very small brush to get inside all the little tiny holes because if you don't paint that, it will be noticeable when you have the final paint coat and there's this little hole that's like dark gray and obviously not painted. It will really stand out, trust me. I waited for the paint to dry and then I went over it with a second coat of paint, waited for that to dry and did a third and final coat of paint. To seal the whole piece, I used a high gloss varnish. You don't have to use that, you can use whatever you'd like. I just really love a high gloss on ceramic pieces. And I painted it on rather than pouring it on because I didn't want it to pool up anywhere and I wanted to make sure I got it in all the little crevices and um, sections where the arteries meet against the base. If I didn't seal this with something, water would ruin the paint and possibly the clay. So this step is probably the most important of all. And because I'm a bit extra, I painted a nice thick second coat just to be sure. I know I say it in almost every video, but I love this gold paint. I use it in almost every single project, as I'm sure you've noticed by now. It just adds a little bit of fanciness and glam to everything. It just, it elevates every piece just in the right way and I love it so much. I was going to do just the top artery where the vase opening is, but I decided to add it to all of the arteries and veins to kind of break up the solid white porcelain look and just to make it look a little bit more interesting. Feel free to take the tape off before or after painting with the gold paint. I took it off before, but if you know that you're a messy painter, then go ahead and keep it on until you're absolutely finished. And you can use an X-Acto knife or a razor blade if the paint goes over the tape. That way you don't pull it off of your sculpture and it'll create a nice clean edge. 